one primary objective. Well, actually, two. We want our system to work. We want it to work. We're going to do everything we can think of to make it work properly. But if it doesn't work, we want it to fail in a predictable and hopefully safe manner. If the failure modes are predictable, we can design the equipment to be fail safe. If there is fail safe in an application. That's the whole thing. That whole big tomb of paper is created to achieve this goal. Always remember this. Every requirement, think, how does it help achieve this goal? Two concepts. Perform the intended function correctly, and that's fundamental reliability engineering. Fail in a predictor manner, that's safety engineering. And there is a subtle difference in these two different fields. Many countries were involved. Early on, I found the strongest influence, although it doesn't matter, from the UK and the European workshop of the European Commission. The Germans were very strong in it. And then uh, the US was also very, very active in the original standard. Remember, if you're reading it, 61508 was written from the bespoke system perspective. It's written as if you are going to be building a system, maybe with your own transistors, and you're programming it in assembly language or something. I mean, it's everything. Uh, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is if you're trying to use it for a, pr a product, a pressure transmitter, you, some of the requirements are not applicable. This bespoke system perspective does create some confusion, and I just wanted to warn you about that. Uh, so keep that in mind. 61508 is called a basic safety standard. It established the fundamental principles, which are used in many different, many different industry-specific standards. There is one for the nuclear sector. I was using it some years ago when we were working on jobs outside primarily Scandinavia and Canada, but uh, I've never seen any of these used in, in the US. Two fundamental concepts. Remember our goal, make it work right or know exactly how it's gonna fail and try to make it fail in a safe way. We do that by setting up detailed engineering processes, primarily software processes. And evaluate all the hardware based on probability of failure. So there's two fundamental concepts. And they're meant to take care of systematic failures, including design, documentation, faults, everything, and random failures. Many, still today, I see comments on LinkedIn uh, safety group. Why do I need a certification on a valve or a solenoid? It does not apply. It says right up here, EEPE, -E, electrical, electronic, programmable electronic. And quite frankly, all the emphasis up front was on programmable electronic because there were many in the committee who felt they could never, programmable electronics could never, ever be used in a safety system. Many members of the committee felt that way when we first met. And um, the part one introduction in 2010 makes these statements, which uh, clarify that. But you already picked up on that. Good. Now, I'd like you to just answer these questions very briefly. Take a, few, a minute or two. Write down your answers. We are going to hand out answer sheets at the end in, on paper. But. Oh, you're not going to tell us the answers until the end? No, no. <laughs> But you have a copy of the answers then. Now you get to see this slide. We always see my set has this, your set doesn't. Basic safety publication is not industry specific and may be used in many different industries. The mining industry in particular is strongly in favor of 61508 for some reason. They, there's no effort that I know of uh, to do any industry specific. Industry-specific examples 
are expected to be development, developed per the concepts in the basic safety publication. And they are. To date, I've seen strong consistency, but a lot of fighting to, to eliminate some of those basic concepts. And there still is a huge contingency of people who want to eliminate the probabilistic analysis. 61508 is being used. I have seen it from elevators to transportation. Cleaning machines. Huge mining equipment. Two fundamental concepts, engineering process, probability of failure. Can 61508 even be used? to certify a product. And that was a debate early on. The answer is yes. In fact, it may be the most common usage of 61508. Well, we had an introduction. Just remember, throughout this entire course, we want stuff to work, and if it doesn't work, we want it to fail in a predictable manner. Everything we speak of in this course is for that purpose.